Hello, in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to go over what is ACES, why I use it, and just maybe why you should as well. So first and foremost, what is ACES? ACES, or Academy Color Encoding System, is basically a visual effects and film workflow for color management. If I look at the Google definition, it says the ACES color space includes everything the human eye can see, meaning there are no restrictions or limitations to the color space. To massively simplify it, ACES allows you to have a consistent color workflow across multiple programs and platforms. One of the main benefits is you can take multiple cameras and apply a conversion to make all of the footage look the same. The next question is why would you use ACES over something like sRGB or Rec. 709, which is much more common. Again, to massively simplify it, ACES allows you to have a much wider gamut of colors. What this means is the ACES color space can display many more values of red, green, and blue, and so you have much more dynamic range in your footage. And because you have that extra range, it allows you to have more versatility in things like compositing and color grading. Whereas if you work in something like sRGB or Rec. 709, you might find yourself hitting the boundaries of what the color space can do. So that was a brief overview of what ACES is and how it works. Now I'm gonna go through and use some footage to give some demonstrations of it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through how to set it up in Blender, Nuke, and DaVinci to resolve and then go through and talk about the color workflow between all three softwares. Okay so here we have two different pieces of footage. This one is shot on my Sony a7 III and it's shot in S-Log2 which is a log color profile which is why it's kind of flat. And this one is shot on my phone so it's obviously much more contrasty because it's not shot in log. One of the main benefits of ACES like I said is you can convert multiple cameras to look very very similar. So for example if I go into the color management settings in DaVinci Resolve change it to ACES CC and you can see also when I changed it to ACES it's quite dramatically changed the colors on the footage. Then what I'm going to do is assign an ACES input transform to each of these. So if I select the phone footage first I'm going to right click and go to ACES input transform and I'm going to set this to be sRGB and as you can see that's now gone back to looking pretty much how it did before. And then then if I take the Sony a7 III footage and go ACES input transform S-Log2, which is what it was shot in, you can see it's now done a conversion and they both look very, very similar. So the great thing about this is if you're someone like me that has a few cameras, I have a GoPro, I have my Sony a7 III, sometimes I shoot on other cameras as well. You can take all of those cameras and convert them to have one solid look, which makes it much easier for doing visual effects and color grading on. But that's more of an editorial thing, which is something that I'm not really into. My predominant workflow is VFX stuff, so I'm not too fussed about, you know, balancing camera looks and things. For me, the main benefit of ACES is the transforming of the log footage into a more usable color space. And this is a perfect example. If you're shooting on a green screen, you don't want it to be really low contrast and low saturation because you want there to be a distinct difference between the green of the green screen and the foreground elements, so it's much easier to pull a key. If I switch back to the normal DaVinci Resolve color spaces, you can see that this one, when it's really flat, there's not much of a difference tonally between the gray of my jumper and the green of the screen, which is gonna make it much harder to isolate me from the green screen. The extra contrast and saturation that comes with doing the ACES conversion makes this much easier to work on for visual effects. To demonstrate this, I've got an example from a video I did a few months ago. In this video I didn't do the ACES transform and I worked on the footage in log and as you can see here when I start trying to do a green screen key it looks absolutely horrendous. There's loads and loads of noise in the key and you can see there if I rewind a little bit look at how horrific the edge is on that green screen key. Whereas if I had done the ACES input transform and converted it properly so it was easier to work on, then it would have been a lot easier to key this. So that's how ACES works and a quick demo. If that's all you're interested in, feel free to click off the video now. But if you're interested in adopting ACES and using it in your workflow, now I'm gonna go through how to set it up in the three different pieces of software. And I'll also share some cool tips that I've learned from watching multiple YouTube videos on this topic, because there's a couple of things that will catch you out with working with ACES. So first things first, let's import some new footage. This is a perfect opportunity to show off the clip of me acting out the scene with no CGI. So to start working in ACES, the first thing you want to do is go to File, Project Settings, and under the Color Management tab, you want to change from the DaVinci Resolve color space to ACES CC. Then you set your output device transform to be either sRGB or Rec. 709. Then you can either leave the input device transform blank. If you have multiple cameras, it might be better to just assign it manually. Or if it's just all on one camera and it's all one color space like me, I shot in S-Log2, then you can assign this as your input transform and it will just interpret all of the footage that comes in as S-Log and convert it to sRGB. So now if I hit save, you can see it's gonna do the color space conversion up here. Once I've done that, what I do is I jump to the deliver tab and I get ready to export this into Nuke. For all of my VFX stuff, what I do is I I export to an EXR format. So I set the format to EXR, codec to RGB half zip compression, then obviously decide where it goes and then hit add to render queue. Now, very importantly, before you hit render, you have to turn off the output device transform. If you don't turn this off, it does a bit of a weird double conversion when you render and you end up with footage in the wrong color space, which is obviously not ideal. So set this back to no input transform and then hit save. You can see now the footage looks like it's gone quite dark and contrasty. That's because we've turned off the display transform. But when I bring it back into Nuke or Blender, it will look correct. So now that that's done, hit start render. 
and now it's ready to be picked up in the next piece of software. I'm in Nuke now and I already have Aces set up, but this doesn't happen by default. You have to download something. So you have to download the Aces setup files. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. Click on the link, download these files, and then you'll be good to go. Then in Nuke, what you want to do is go into your settings, go to color management. Mine's already set up, but I'm going to reset it to the default. So this is how yours should look. You want to change it from Nuke default to custom. And then what you want to do is browse to wherever you downloaded the files from GitHub. So for me, it's here. Then go into whatever is the latest version at the time you've downloaded this. So for me, it's 1.2. And then you want to click on the config.ocio file and open it. And basically that config file is like the library that tells Nuke where all of the ACES color transforms and stuff are, which ones to use when. And as you might have noticed when I changed it, all of these default color transforms also changed to be the ACES equivalents of what they were before. So then you can hit OK. And then what you want to do up here is change your view transform to sRGB in brackets ACES. Obviously if your monitor isn't sRGB, change it to Rec 709 or whatever else you're working on. Now that's set up, Nuke is working with ACES. So what I can do is read in the footage we just exported from DaVinci. And when I look at this, it looks the same as it did in DaVinci Resolve. Doesn't seem that mind blowing now, but when I was trying to figure this out on my own, it took forever to get it to look right. And just to show you the difference, this is what it looks like viewing it in Aces. If I change back to the Nuke default color spaces, it looks like this. And you can see it's gone a lot flatter. So the next thing I do once that's done is I export some JPEGs to Blender so I can start working on them in CG. So to do that, you just add a write node and then set it to wherever you want it to go to. When you set Nuke to render out some JPEGs, it will default the color space to matte painting, which is correct. That's baking in the ACES color transforms into the JPEGs. And then you can just set the quality to be whatever you like and then hit render. Then next we want to jump into Blender. Again, out of the box, Blender's not quite set up to work with ACES, so you have to do a little bit of tweaking. So open up a file browser, go to your hard drive that Windows is saved on, go to the root folders, then go into Program Files, Blender Foundation, go on the version of Blender that you want to change to use ACES, go into the version number folder, and then go into Data Files, and then the Color Management folder. Then what you want to do is delete all of these. I'm not going to do it because I've got this set up in a way that I like, but basically select them all, delete, get rid of them. Then what you want to do is go to the folder where you downloaded the GitHub stuff. Then you want to select all of them and hit copy and then go into the folder that should be empty. Obviously ignore the fact that these are still here and paste them into this folder. What that's going to do is replace the default color settings in Blender with the ACES ones. Then if you open up the version of Blender that is set up to use ACES, under the render settings, you can go to the color management tab. And if you open this, you should see display devices set to ACES now. And if you see that, it means it's worked and you're good to go. You can start working in ACES. So like I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of things that can catch you out when working in ACES. One of the main things is there's now loads and loads of color spaces because it has transforms from basically any color space into another color space. So if I open the footage that I exported from Nuke, this is what it looks like when I bring it in by default. Obviously the color space is a little bit wonky. By default, this is in ACES CC. We actually want this to be in the matte painting color space that we exported it from Nuke. And if you click on the color spaces menu, you go, oh my God, there's so many that it's going off the screen. You actually have to zoom out in the Blender UI to click on it and display all of the color spaces. It's pretty crazy. What we want to do is set it to the matte painting one, like I said, and a quicker way to do it than zooming out and searching through the menus all the time is you can just click on the box and then hit M and it will basically jump to the first one that starts with M, which just happens to be matte painting and as you can see now it's defaulted to the correct color space so then you can track your footage do all that lovely stuff and then if we go back to the 3d viewport and add a camera i can go to background footage add background image Again, for the background image, the color space is completely whack. So go over to the background image settings and then on the color space drop down, click it and hit M and it will jump to the matte painting, which is the correct one. That's one of the only drawbacks of ACES. There's so many color spaces that you have to kind of go through and assign them, which is a little bit annoying, but it's part of the fun. Another time it will probably catch you out is when you're using image textures for shaders. So normally these would be set to sRGB, but because the sRGB color space no longer exists, they've just defaulted to be blank and they look really crazy if you look at it in rendered view. And this is why on the first Iron Man video that I did, all of the colors, especially on things like the gold, looked really weird. It's because I didn't realize this was a problem, so all of the textures were in the wrong color space and they didn't display the things like the metallic properly. So the way to fix this is basically the same thing. You go on the color space tab and hit M and then it will default to roll matte painting. The only difference here is you want the base color to be the matte painting, but you want the rest of them to be the equivalent of setting this to non-color data like you do for normal maps and things in the normal version of Blender. In Aces, it has a similar name. It's just called roll data. And the fastest way to get to it instead of clicking on this and finding it every time is again, click on the color space and hit M, which will take you to the matte painting one and then hold control and scroll the mouse wheel up twice. And luckily in the list, it's only two away from the matte painting one. So you can jump to it by pressing M and then just scroll up twice. And that's how you do it for all of these ones. Then what you can do is set up the CG and get it ready to go. I'm not gonna spend the time to do this properly. I've spent way too long working on Iron Man videos recently. So I'm just gonna render it like this instead. 
Similarly, with HDRIs, you also have to set these to be the correct color space. Because these are an EXR, not a JPEG, they need to be set to Utility Linear sRGB. I don't have a fast keyboard shortcut to get to this, I'm afraid, so zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole menu, and then just find Utility Linear sRGB, which is here. You probably won't see a huge change there, but it does handle the colors a little bit differently, so it's important to set it to the right one. After that, you can hit render. Okay, that's finished rendering. I'm gonna bring in the render now. Like I said, I didn't spend any time getting it to actually line up, so it looks hilarious. But if I just set the black points and stuff to be in the same sort of place, that's gonna be my very in-depth compositing. And then you want to write it out of Nuke as an EXR and go back into DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna add another write node, set my render destination. You want to make sure you set this to be an EXR. It will default to scene linear, which is correct because it's a linear EXR. And then under the options, you want to tick write ACES compliant EXR. This will basically make the EXR compliant with the ACES color space, very self-explanatory. And you don't have to change anything else, that's it. So then hit render. Okay, back in DaVinci Resolve now. The first thing I do once I start bringing back in the VFX shots is I create a new folder for the VFX shots. I go to import media and find the render. Then if I bring this in, I can drop this on top of the footage. I only rendered one frame, so it doesn't really matter what frame. This looks really crazy again because we turned off the output transform before rendering. So I'm gonna go back in and change the output transform to sRGB again. Hit save, and now the footage will go back to looking normal, but the render, which is the EXR, will still look crazy. The reason for this is it hasn't come back in as S-Log2, which is what the footage is in. The DaVinci project is currently set up to convert everything from S-Log2 to sRGB, so it's doing the wrong transform on this, which is why it looks crazy. So to fix that, right-click on the VFX shot render, go to ACES transform, and scroll right the way down to the bottom, you wanna change this to ACES CG. It's easy to remember that because this is coming back from the VFX pipeline, so it's a CGI shot basically. And once you turn that on, it will default back to how it should look. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see that the colors are exactly the same, minus the fact that it has a massive Iron Man in the shot. One final tip is that EXRs are very, very heavy. And currently this is only one frame, so it doesn't really matter. But if you have a whole image sequence for the whole shot, like I did for the Iron Man video, then when you hit play, it usually starts stuttering. The way to fix that is you can right click on the clip and go to generate optimized media. And what it will do then is create a slightly lower quality cache file that you can work on and play back in real time. And then when you go to render, it will use the actual full res image sequences. So then if we pretend this is an entire YouTube video and not just one frame from one shot, you can go to the deliver tab. And this is basically where you export the finished product. For my render settings to YouTube, I set the format to be MP4 and then I set the codec to be H.265. If you don't have DaVinci Resolve Studio, the encoder will just default to native, which is fine, just use that. So then I hit add to render queue and then you hit start render and that's the final step. It will render out onto your hard drive and then you upload it from your hard drive onto the internet and then it gets a million views and you can quit your day job from all the monetization. Wow, that was a lot of talking. Hopefully you guys found that useful. A lot of people ask me to talk about how I use ACES and just how to use it in general. If anyone's interested in picking it up, I highly recommend it, it's really, really cool. You don't have to use any of the paid software to do this, so obviously Blender is free. You can do it in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I was doing that before I recently bought the studio version. I use Nuke Indie in this video, but Nuke Non-Commercial also works in exactly the same way, so just set it up how I showed and it will run exactly the same. Originally, when I started using ACES, I didn't have any videos like this teaching me how to set it up properly. And so there's a few videos like the Thor video and the first Iron Man video that I exported with color space problems, which is why they looked a bit funky. So hopefully what I've done here in the last however many minutes is demystified the whole process for you slightly. If you do get stuck, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try and reply and help you out. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hope it's been useful and I will see you very soon.